Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, taped live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. This Saturday is a doozy because uh, we've got uh, in the morning at nine o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be wearing Ooh. my robe. I'm going to be wearing my okay, robe. Good. Good. I'm if I had shuffle one, over I'd here wear one too. with my first cup. Yeah, well, my first cup probably at eight. This will be my second cup. Shuffle over here. I might, I might Uber Eats or DoorDash some McGriddles for this because oh, it's a very special day. It is. It's Elimination Chamber at I believe six p.m. Pacific. We've got Triple A with Ray to Reyes, and at the yeah. same time, you think an hour earlier than yeah, that. Yeah, Impact starts an hour earlier. No surrender. Impacts surrender. no surrenders. It's our Super Sizzler Saturday. Oh, that's right. Uh, we got to order some Sizzler for dinner that night. I don't know that I'm going to order a Sizzler, man. I'll be honest with you. Like DoorDash Sizzler, I don't really know about. I mean, that. that's in, it's that's the, the, the the reason, the name. It's, but we're not being sponsored by Sizzler, so like, Doesn't why matter. would we get? I would have Sizzler in probably Sizzler? 30, 30 years. 30 How about this? We'll, we'll we'll mix it up a little bit. You get Sizzler and give us a review of your Sizzler live during Impact slash Ray to Reyes, and then I'll just eat like something else. We'll talk about it later. How about we both? How about this? Can we agree on this? We both door dash some McGriddles. Well, here's the thing is that I only got like room in my my diet for like one like meal that's bad for me a day. Same for speaking. me. And I'd much rather spend it on McGriddles in the morning. I know. I know. I'm getting Multiple. with McGriddles. But at the same time, it's the sizzling Saturday steaks. I feel like the sizzler's yeah. got to be involved somehow. Champions advantage. Right. So I say we get McGriddles. <laughs> you don't make decisions for me. I'm the champion, though. Don't I get? Yeah, an but advantage? I'm the boss. I'm the boss, Larson. Are you though? For the most part, we all answer to someone. Anyways, uh, so we've got those three shows, and those are huge, huge for our predictions for February. Basically, oh. the month begins and ends on Saturday. Well, no, there's tomorrow. There's NXT Vengeance Day. Yeah, those are a lot. That's a lot of gimmies, though. I, I kind of feel like that. Yeah, it does start. You're right, but I feel like Saturday. Will basically oh, decide. Yeah. It February. will. It basically. I kind of feel we, like it will. Are we doing a watch along to NXT tomorrow? Since we're doing oh, we picks? we can. I think we can do that. I'm pretty right. sure we can do that. I don't see any problem with that. Yeah, we're not gonna not not like a review afterwards, but yeah, no, we could do a no. watch along. Yeah, that sounds right. cool. I was curious. Um, so yeah, we'll do Avengers Day watch along because it is part of the uh, predictions month uh, uh, events. So that's cool. And uh, and then yeah, Saturday's a big day on the Twitch. Early in the morning, and then later on, like, I don't know, whatever, six hours after that, whenever that starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. So join us on the Twitch for all that. Want to give a big shout out to Magnum AD, Action Coast Wrestling. Mm-hmm. This weekend, you, me, Hilton, we uh, went down to uh, to the Action Coast Arena. And, yes. uh, and we saw uh, this was the first live indie show. I think either of us have been to ever since the old, the whole pandemic thing started. Yep. yep. And uh, and man, they packed the Action Coast Arena, just twists and turns galore during man, this show. Fun show. This was an absolute blast, uh, and I can't wait to go to the next one. Uh, there's a lot of wrestling here in the area coming up. We got Prestige coming up in March. That's going to be a lot of fun, uh, and then I'm I'm sure probably a whole lot more stuff. So yes. um. So, yeah, uh, thanks again to Action Coast Wrestling. Yes, hell of a show. Fantastic show. It was really, really great stuff. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, confirmed uh, for chat. Uh, uh, Hilton Hilton does exist. He was there, and it was a blast. It was an absolute blast to see. It was. It was. It was. Um, Yeah, I don't think I literally had not seen Hilton in person since pandemic. Well, I told you. I've seen him twice. Yeah, just like to help for, him move stuff. Yeah, for a handful of minutes each time, <laughs> which, he lives is, real close. which is very on brand for Hilton. <laughs> Anyways, oh man, um, yeah. So I guess we should just dive into it. We got uh, we got some news from the weekend. What's going on? Uh, so you know, Steve and I we review Raw and SmackDown every week. Uh, yeah, much much was made of us. When uh, we stopped doing raw on Monday nights, doing our raw reviews Monday nights, because we just couldn't deal with it anymore. Just creatively, it wasn't an interesting show. Yeah, we might and stop doing Friday night SmackDowns too, <laughs> because right now it's not creative. Creatively, it's not that interesting of a show. Yeah, WWE's product for the most part, while at times entertaining, 
it's been a long time since it's felt must watch live. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, which is interesting because there's such a premium on live content these days. Yet yeah. WWE turns out live content that you can miss entire months of watch pay per view and feel completely caught up. Anyways, W Creative has been pretty wildly inconsistent and regularly disappointing over the last few years. And while viewership might be down, WWE revenues way up sky high man sky with, high yes with the company reporting they grossed over one billion dollars for the first time ever in 2021 during a recent q a uh, pw insiders mike johnson was asked why wb's product feels so stale and according to johnson apparently vince is in any way inclined to address that particular criticism from his fan base this is what uh, mike johnson had to say quote in his mind he doesn't think anything is wrong the company made a billion dollars last year, so there's a billion reasons for him to shrug off any criticisms. We are told he pushes and presents what he likes and wants. Nothing else makes a dent in that vision. That's why the shows are presented the way they are, and that's why nothing is going to change anytime soon, if ever. He, I mean, we've been saying for the long t- longest time, he's got no motivation to change anything because he's making a ton of money. You know, it, it, it's, it's kind of immaterial, if the show is good or not, so long as he can uh, retain his sponsors, continue to get good TV deals, uh, and 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 get enough people to the, come to the shows, they don't lose money there. They're going to be financially all right, regardless of the content they put out. Yeah, they're not just going to be financially all right; they're going to be financially stellar, and that's and that's that's the thing. I mean, let's be honest, man; it doesn't matter. What you and I say or what we think, um, their 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 stock price five years ago was twenty two dollars and fourteen cents, and today it sits at fifty six dollars and eight cents. It's a one hundred and fifty three percent increase. Their market remember cap. Over, remember, it was over a hundred dollars for a little bit. Yeah, dude, that was such an outlier, though. It really was. Um, their market cap was four. There is four point two billion dollars they could probably sell for like six or seven or something like that i don't know if so i'm not a a stock market guy um but i'm more into crypto and nft i'm so joking yeah uh but here's we also said this too is how much money they leaving on the table by having mediocre product so that's such an abstract thing well it is to an extent but if 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 they were producing content that people felt was must watch i would i would guess i would surmise that their weekly viewership numbers would potentially be higher and due to that they could probably get a better tv deal you are probably right i mean you, you look if if their if their ratings were double what they are now oh yeah but we don't deal with like vince mcmahon ain't thinking about alternate universe situations no and uh, billions and billions of dollars in deals. I mean, this dude ain't thinking anything, but I know what works. He's completely and totally valid. By the way, this this thing with, with Mike Johnson, he's not saying anything that's like new. He's not no. saying anything that's. It's just, this is just this is just him understanding the nature of Vince McMahon and where he's coming from. And it's and it's it's totally legit. Like, why should he think to himself, oh? I should be recognizing other wrestling companies. I should be telling stories that are that are full of twists and turns and and and, and character arcs and and stories with beginning, middles, and ends. Nah, man, he's making multiple billion dollar deals. He doesn't need to do shit. And Brandon Thurston correctly is saying the same thing that you were just saying. You know, the idea is, is he leaving that? That's it's such an abstract thing to think though. It's like, oh my god, I'm leaving billions more on the table. When you've got a company with a market cap of four billion dollars, well, it's another couple billion, huh? I just don't know that. <laughs> kind of, I just don't know that he even thinks about that stuff. Because anybody who says, "Hey, you're leaving money on the table," what you, I've got multiple billion dollar deals. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that like it's true. It's it's totally true. There will not be a change creatively unless their um, hand is forced. That means that if money is taken out of their pocket. That's the only way that change is going to be brought up, brought about. If, I if mean, Vince thinks he has to change because money, he's losing money. Even That's during, it. even during the latest uh, 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 earnings call, 
there was the idea that they might do they they're going to try to do more international dates be it Saudi Arabia or whatever else because that's another huge chunk of money yes. that yes. they I mean they here's the thing they could be even without the creative stuff they could be I get the feeling they think that they're leaving money on the table in other areas that they are looking to capitalize on and uh and yeah I mean it, it's 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 insane to me that AEW is able to get ratings that are within a certain frame of WWE, within earshot of, of, of WWE or within a stone's throw, or whatever, of mm-hmm. WWE, because they're a company that's worth like a tenth of yeah. what WWE is. But WWE is in the eyes of it's the name brand. Pretty much anybody who matters, they're the name brand. I mean, if if TNT, if 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 Turner had the chance to drop AEW and pick up WWE, they'd do it in a heartbeat. They would absolutely do it because WWE is the name and all these huge conglomerates want the thing. Mm-hmm. They want the number one thing. So, yeah, no, it, it, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change until... I mean, that's why, that's why Vince had no problem whatsoever dropping the direction of NXT for, uh, for just 2. you know 0, send, yeah. sending Bruce over there to do 2.0. Because he he can afford because of these billion dollar deals he can afford to to to, to basically change an entire subdivision of his company to basically to prove a point to his son in law. So yeah. yeah, sad to say it's it's probably not going to change. That being said, there's still plenty of stuff about WWE I enjoy. Yeah, there's still stuff about WWE I enjoy, namely NXT UK, probably the best <laughs> weekly product the the company produced. He probably doesn't know about. Well, it. here's the thing: of like, I feel like more people should watch it because it's a really fun show but at the same time you're right yeah. like if it gets on vince's radar right it's gonna like, be changed could be changed completely they're gonna send it's right uh, now they're it's, gonna send miz down there to be the uk the uh european or U- uk champion uh no thank you i know right it's gonna have no, a british accent you. and everything all right let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor factor you know larson yeah much like the mighty grizzly bear winter is the time where i stay in a lot But unfortunately for me, it's not to hibernate. As you know, I'm a busy man. I got stuff to do for Going In Raw, our new channel, Friendo Club TV, Wrestle Juice. I got to stream also, plus got to watch all that wrestling every week. That doesn't leave me much time to do a lot of cooking in the kitchen, but I have found a way to eat well without having to worry about meal planning or prep now that I've got Factor. Yeah, Factor makes it easy to eat clean 24-7 with fresh, never-frozen, pre-prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you, and they're ready to eat in just two minutes. Factor's chef-crafted meals are also delivered directly to your door, so that means no grocery shopping, no meal prep, no cleanup, no washing dishes. Can't stand washing dishes. Can't know, stand it. I know. But you know what, man? Factor's got a team of registered dietitians and expert chefs who work together to create delicious meals with nutritious ingredients. Plus, Factor's got variety with more than 29 meal options each week. You'll never get bored. Factor offers vegan and veggie meals, cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, keto meals, and a lot more to keep you fueled and focused all day long. You get everything you ever wanted when you're dealing with Factor. So head to go.factor75.com slash raw120 and use code raw120 to get $120 off. That's code raw120 at go.factor75.com slash raw120 for $120 off. Uh, Anyways, let's talk about this. Might have a potential WrestleMania match on the horizon now. We're gonna. Are we gonna dance around yeah. the spoilers here? Yeah, yeah the potential. I, wasn't, I was. I wasn't gonna mention that. No. All right. So well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sami Zayn is currently number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. This story is predicated on the idea that it's entirely possible at some point between now and WrestleMania, he might win the Intercontinental Championship. We both figured that the feud between Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn would play out through Rumble and generally be over with by the time Jackass Forever was released. But then that beef seemed to only escalate following the Rumble. Of course, you remember Sami Zayn tried to attend the premiere, was thwarted by Knoxville and his cronies, and then Sami Zayn was able to sneak back in the mm-hmm. theater. 
mm-hmm. to check out Jackass Forever, which everybody seems to say is amazing, by the way. Yeah, I got to check that myself. out. Yeah, same. Now Dave Meltzer is reporting the story could continue all the way to WrestleMania. Are we going to see Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville for you the know, final I, championship? I thought it was a possibility that we might see Sami versus somebody with Knoxville in that individual's corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I was not necessarily expecting to actually see Knoxville in the ring opposite Sami Zayn in a one-on-one match. I'd still mm-hmm. be pretty – I'd be fairly surprised if that happened. Mm-hmm. But yeah. at the same time – you know, uh, WB loves bringing celebrities in to be a part of their major shows, especially at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, wouldn't be shocked. But same, I mean, Sami Zayn's going to win. Well, I here's the thing. Yeah, unless Chris think. Pontius comes out, and rips off pants, party boy. And says, "Hey, it's party time." Party time. Distracted Sammy. Him and uh, him, him and Steve-O show up in like a zebra costume. Mm. <laughs> Uh yeah no I look Johnny Knoxville's great I thought he had a killer little performance in the Rumble his uh, uh the the Minutemen song Corona would make for a killer wrestling theme song yes uh he's got the the promo skills uh and he obviously he'll do whatever you know given his match with Butterbean in the department store uh, a decade ago you know that dude he can he can take a punch um I believe he and- got concussed in that particular incident didn't he. Yeah, but you know what? Butterbean caught a, a lucky shot or 10. Uh, if there's anybody you'd want in that ring with a celebrity, it's probably going to be Sami Zayn. Yeah, that guy's probably, like yeah. a f- you know phenomenal wrestler. He can make anybody look great. Um, this feud has actually been pretty enjoyable. Part of it is obviously just tickling uh, Gen X's uh, nostalgia bone. Mm-hmm. But uh, Knoxville's great. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be totally down for this. You know, there are certain celebrities like I, I'm. I am no by no means a fan of like the Paul brothers, but it's like whenever, um, which one was on Jake or Logan, which one Logan, Logan, Logan. Logan. whenever Logan was on TV, he did a good job. Like he was, whenever he showed up on WWE programming, he did a really good job and I'm actually a fan of Knoxville. So I'm cool with this, Mm -hmm. whatever they got to do this. They do the celebrity thing all the time. So, uh, I'm cool with that. It's hey, they're doing literally nothing with the, they've been doing nothing with the IC title. I know nothing ever since Shinsuke got it, which is a crime, yeah. but yeah, do something with it. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Do something with it. Bring some, uh, some notoriety, some eyeballs on the intercontinental title. And I would, again, assume that Sammy would win at WrestleMania and then, uh, you know, hopefully uh, do something good with the IC title mm-hmm. for the first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, AEW now, they're going to do a, a pair of Owen Hart cup tournaments, one for men, one for women. Uh, I believe they announced the finals of each tournament were going to be a double or nothing, but they didn't really say anything about when the tournament was going to kick off. We found out today because they announced that along with returning to Long Island on May 11th, they're kicking off those two tournaments that same day at the, that taping. So that's exciting. We still don't know exactly the structure of the tournament, how many uh, participants per tournament, per tournament, uh, what, you know, is, 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 is they get like a title shot for winning the tournament. Don't know these things yet, but I like tournaments in my wrestling. I'm excited yeah. for this. Yeah, tournaments great. They're fun. Um, they did a good job with the uh, with the TBS title tournament. I thought that mm-hmm. was cool. I thought they you know brought the they sort of they didn't just like pack it all into a couple shows. It was like over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. So this is going to be right after Double or Nothing, right? Double or Nothing is usually early May, right? No, it's the end of May. It's Memorial Day weekend. So ah, the, the end of the May. Finals. Okay. The finals are Double or Nothing. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. Who's your early pick for uh, well, the I mean, you know who's in it. Cup? I don't know who's in it. Ruby Soho and Johnny Gargano. That's my early picks right there. All right, those are good picks. We got a Raw preview for Raw tonight. Brock Lesnar's back to address the WWE Universe. For entering Elimination Chamber, well, where he will probably win that title back. Probably, probably. Yeah. High confidence on that one. Uh, AJ Styles collides with Damian Priest. Damian for the Priest. U.S. Championship. Is this where uh, Damian drops the Priest and just becomes Damian? Is he going to lose this title and then just go completely? I kind of feel like that's a, that's a distinct possibility. I really feel like that's a distinct possibility. Because he's totally gonna go heel. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this should be fun. Riddle's gonna Riddle's gonna throw an RK Broga party, mm-hmm. which is his fancy way of calling it. It's, it's Toga party. Toga. 
toga part. The togas. Yeah. Uh, then Lita stops by Raw on the way to a Raw Women's title match at Elimination Chamber. Uh, yeah, that should be a really good match. I hope Lita. I don't think she's gonna, but it's always possible. I hope she does like another run. That would be That'd fun. Be cool. I think. I, I think it'd be great. Honestly, think that like if uh, if uh, so if Bailey's back for Mania, her and Sasha Banks versus like Lita and Trish. Trish. Or, That'd be Something good. like that. I mean, that would make the most sense. Or like the Bella Twins, I guess. That'd make sense. Mm-hmm. But if Lita's going to stick around, then that could that could make a lot of sense. That could be really cool. That would be cool. That would be really what cool. What do you think of, uh, I, before we get into the questions here, somebody mentioned this, the rebranding of 205 Live to NXT Next Level? Was that what it was called? Oh, is that what it was? I think it was. They, they, uh, they got a trademark. Somebody here in chat had it. And I saw this uh, over the weekend. Mm-hmm. They had a uh, they the, some the, the WWE got a trademark for I think it was called Next Level. Yeah, here would we it go. actually be spelled Next N E X T or is it N X T Level? T N A Man says they locked down a trademark for a new NXT show called NXT Next Level. So Next is spelled properly. Oh, all right. Seems like it's. I mean, otherwise it's like oh NXT because I don't know. Seems like people, people might think oh there's two NXTs man this must be two point oh. NXT and next level, but no E and, and next. Well, then it's just NXT. I was going to say the same thing, but at that point, we're all conditioned to look at NXT and not think next. Yeah. You know, it seems that's pretty much what it was supposed to mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it next. is. Uh, uh, the, 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 the meek here in chat says 205 Live is basically at this point NXT dark. That's exactly what it is. It is. It is. It's NXT's main event, not the main event of the show, the show main event. The show, the show main event. Yeah, SmackDown doesn't have its own main event. They've only got dark matches, which nobody ever sees. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. You want to answer some questions? Yeah. Yeah. Let's answer some questions. Uh, Juan Guerrero Jr. Uh, asked if Ring of Honor continues to allow their world championship to be defended on indie shows even after their return, would it be actually beneficial to have Matt Cardona, the new NWA heavyweight champion, won that over the weekend? Uh, oh, eventually yeah. win the title considering he seems to be the new belt collector and is going on a tear right now. Would you want Matt Cardona to win that Ring of Honor championship? Obviously, yeah, that'd be great. Be awesome. No, probably not. But yeah, he's awesome. Did you see he was wearing like Christian gear? I know. Uh, it was like that... so many years to the day that Christian won the uh, NWA title. So was this done for like TV or a pay-per-view or something? I think it was a pay-per-view. Was it a pay-per-view? They I are so, so off so far off the radar at I this know. point. So I know. I mean, kind of a, a cool move for them to to bring Cardona in. He's sort of the the guy in like independent wrestling right now. Mm-hmm. He's doing such great work. Um, and then I got, apparently he uh, he tweeted out something about should he turn the NWA title into a spinner title or add a purple strap to it? What would be your preference, there, Larson? Spinner, of course. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Tobias has another Matt Cardona question. Uh, says, do you think a lot of his success has been that he's been doing the indie shows and impact? I feel like he would have gotten lost in the roster in AEW. Also, Steve, how hyper are you for the new Doctor Strange film? I mean, he had those handful of appearances in AEW. Never got any sense what creative direction, if any, uh, they're going to take with him because he was there, what, under a five-show deal or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This just feels like he's got something in mind that he wants to do. He knows exactly what it is. Yeah. And he's been given the latitude to do what he wants to do with his from a, from a character and creative standpoint. And he's it, yeah hit a home run with it so far. It just works. And nothing he would have done in AEW would have been would have been good because it doesn't it doesn't what he's doing makes so much sense. Going to GCW, which is like the anti WWE, working with the anti WWE guy Nick Gage winning and and then going on a tear and then trying to sports entertainment up everything in his path and a, and a big F you to everybody in the process is a stroke of genius. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a way to capitalize off what he did in WWE and, uh, and it's absolutely brilliant and it wouldn't work under like a proper sort of polished no. corporate structure. No. They, they re I mean, impact had him come in and do something similar to what he's doing in GCW, and he won the uh, the digital media championship off Jordan. You know, he I think he was with the guy who early on said, "I don't really want to do intergender stuff," and he played that story. I watched this match. He played that story out where he was like really hesitant to mm. like initiate contact with Jordan Grace, but then in the end, he ends up blasting her in the head with a chair. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> when the ref wasn't paying attention and winning it, it's brilliant. It's it's so great. It's awesome. And now every everybody on the indie scene wants a wants a piece of that, which is, mm-hmm. you know, smart, smart for the NW to do this because yes. this is the first time they got any buzz since, you know, I don't know, when they were on YouTube. Yeah. And they yeah, had since, uh since power docking, yeah, doing their theme song. Yeah. Uh White Brownie with the mystery competitor for the women's elimination chamber match, most like most likely getting revealed today. Who do you hope it is and who do you think it'll actually be? I, I think it's probably going to be Oscar. You'd think so. I kind of hope it's not because Bianca should win this thing. Oh yeah, regardless of Oscar's in the chamber match or not, Bianca has to win this. Yeah. And while I would like it to be Oscar, at the same time, I don't want it to be because I don't want her to have to lose. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Uh, Freedom Ke says uh, it's probably going to be Alexa. Oh. If it's Alexa, doesn't that also mean that she look? You and I are, but and the majority of people we we talk to here on Twitter and everywhere else, like we all think that this story is built for Bianca. Yeah, but Vince might see Alexa or Oscar and be like, "Well, no, this is the bigger deal. This is the match for WrestleMania." But I don't. It's it's got to be Bianca. It's got to be because if it's not if it's not Bianca and Becky. And they would have done Ronda and Becky. So it's got to be Bianca. And they would have been, they'd have done Sasha Charlotte. Yeah. I don't know, man. Jonathan here says it's going to be Kane. (laughs) Uh, B-Man, Don Wagner, says what occupational gimmicks would best suit wrestlers based purely on their looks? Uh, what do you see Otis as? Wow, it, it'd be it'd be. I, I kind of see Otis as like a a, a, a PE teacher. Mm-hmm. That'd be yeah, like someone who used to play football or something, and then didn't get to make it to the pros, and so yeah. their PE teacher slash like offensive line coach for the the high school team. I remember there was a dude uh, I went to both middle school and high school with. And he was a really good soccer player. Mm-hmm. And now he teaches he he teaches soccer like at the park down there or whatever. He's mm-hmm. all hefty now. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not athletic anymore. Mm-hmm. But he still knows how to play soccer, I imagine. Yeah, definitely. That's, you don't forget that stuff. No. <laughs> so that's Otis. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that works. That's good. That's good. Uh, Joe, any further thoughts on Brock's appearance on the Pat McAfee show? Now that you have yet to watch it, Steve, any further uh, thoughts about it? No additional uh, comments on something I have not seen yet. I hope I'm... I hope Pat upgrades his, his table so it doesn't get broken so easily. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing it. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Uh, Blake Elizondo, does AEW have a problem with storytelling in their undercard or has WWE conditioned me to be spoon-fed feuds? Baker hiring Martinez to take out Rosa so Cargill could advance in a different tiles tournament is just one example of a very unclear story to me. I mean, Britt and Thunder Rosa's feud goes back a year. A little bit more. Yeah. Um, so Britt paying somebody to deny Thunder Rosa an opportunity to success makes sense from that standpoint, especially when you think, okay, this is to help motivate their next match they're going to have probably at Revolution. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, I, I, no, I think it's fine. I think that AEW does, like, they're not perfect. I think that they do, they do a lot of logical storytelling in their, in their mid card. And that's sort of all I ask for is for stuff mm-hmm. to make sense. And, and then you move on from that. You don't dilly dally. And WWE does a lot of dilly dallying. Um, so, yeah, no, I think they're fine. And that makes sense to me. I don't think she's doing Jade any favors. I mean, intentionally, I think she was just trying to take out Thunder Rosa. Yeah. Yeah. Because in fact, when when Mercedes came out to interfere in that match, I was like, "Why do they have? Why did they have someone help Jade win? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah." But then it's like, no, they didn't have so like Jade didn't have someone come to help her win. This was a separate story, mm-hmm. crossing paths with this one. It's like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I was fine with it. 
Um, I mean, it's not like I said; it's not always perfect in AEW, but no. I think they I think they get a lot of stuff in that in that. I think they I think they do try to keep things logical, and that's just honestly. When when you, when you when you as if you're writing anything, you should always be asking the question why? Yeah. Why is this happening? And if you can't and easily feel, answer that, then you got a problem. I feel, I feel like WWE is just too often. I sit there watching Raw, and I'm like, why did they do that? And there's no easy answer. No. There's it's, no. it's, it's so many times there's just not an easy answer. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a dude call Quest asks do we really need more of the 2k wwe games i used to love the smackdown versus raw but i want to hear your opinion yeah they they like to make they they make the money off the video games Mm -hmm. hopefully this one will be better um so yeah if nothing else the you know the models look good they look it's a visually it's a distinct improvement over 2k20 yeah, uh, that one seemed like a downgrade from 2K19, though. So it seemed like a downgrade from 2K12. Yeah, no. like it is. It is pretty shocking. Like once you see the render of like The Rock in this one versus whoever they used on that last one, it is shocking. Yeah, <laughs> like how much of a difference? It's a pretty there major is. improvement. Yeah. Now, will the gameplay itself be any better? I don't. Once I That's get my hands test. on it, once I get my hands on it, then I'll let you know. But if nothing else. It looks better. Yes. Uh, all Al Leong, the Watchtower, is Wardlow currently more over than any face in WWE? No. Because if you consider Brock Lesnar a face, he's pretty over right now. He's pretty. You know what I really hope they do? I was thinking <laughs> about this. You know what there's never enough of? And they kind of had it with Miro. They kind of had it with Miro. The bad guy who's just unbeatable. Yeah. You know, like MJF, it's the same thing every time at the end of his matches. It's the stupid ring, right? I'm I'm like, okay, I know how this is going to end. Every every time it's the ring. How great would it be if Wardlow, who's getting over huge as a face, right? How great would it be if it was like he just sort of takes over from MJ? Like he, anni- he eventually annihilates MJF and then just takes over the group. Mm-hmm. But he's still just a bully and a badass and a mean guy and nobody can beat him it's like that's what made brock so great yeah i know he's just know. He, the dude he was just a bully and nobody could beat him legitimately yeah i think there there is an over reliance when somebody's a heel they have to cheat give me a heel who just and i think that they were getting there with miro because miro would yeah, just I know. beat the shit out of he would people. just annihilate everybody i know he wouldn't necessarily cut corners yeah yeah uh, Greg Morris, top five Keith Lee matches you want to see in AEW. Hopefully, Miro is on that list. I would like to see Miro and Keith Lee. I think uh, Keith Lee and Wardlow would be great. Hobbs, yes, Fuego. I want to see how far he can throw. A- oh, Marco Stunt. I want to see. I want to see how far he could throw a person. All right, that's Good. what I want to see. Good. Yeah. Good. That Orange Cassidy fine. would be fun. That could be interesting. Just to see how much of the comedy stuff Keith Lee would engage in. I think that could be a lot uh, of fun. I mean, I guess we probably want to see him against Adam Cole. Revisit that. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kobe Rose asks, how would you turn Roman face in WWE after his long title reign or during, and how would you do it? Uh, I think... You got to wait. Honestly, I don't think you turn him until the crowd really wants it. Until until you can't have yeah. him be heel anymore. Yeah. I feel like that's how you do it. You don't just do it. You get, The crowd has to, like, really, really be at a they, fever they pitch for him. They would have to want yeah. it, yes. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it would have to be inevitable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's just something that has to happen organically. Mm-hmm. Uh, similarly with Roman and JWP asks if Roman wins both titles at mania, how does he lose one of them? And after how long? That's a great question because I thought they were going to run longer with Becky as double champion. Yeah, me too. And they didn't. And they didn't. I Roman, I, he would have to. I think they want Roman this run of his as long as it's successful, which it seems to be, to be like an all-time deal, mm. like mm-hmm. an all-time. 
he's got both titles. You know, they keep him just working TV, just Raws and SmackDowns. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he sort of would be the walking unified guy. Like, it wouldn't yeah. necessarily be – they wouldn't turn the time. Maybe they would unify him. I don't know. Maybe they would. Or maybe, maybe next year would. at WrestleMania he uh, defends one belt each night or something like that. Oh, yeah, that could be. That could be, yeah. Like, maybe the first night, night one, I mean, it wouldn't be the main event. Because uh, if they do Roman Rock, it's going to be for the the main event of the whole show, night two. Mm-hmm. But like if he beats Rock night one, then has a match night two against somebody for mm-hmm. the other belt. Yeah, and that's when he loses. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dominic asks, "Who do you think should be the first wrestler signed by WWE to open the Forbidden Door and go to either Impact, PWG, et cetera, et cetera?" He says he'd like it to be Dolph Ziggler. So if Vince all of a sudden was like, yeah, forbidden doors open, I guess who, I, I think that's the question. Yeah. Seth Rollins. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, I would say Kevin Owens. I, I'd, I'd make it Kevin Owens. I think that would be a blast. That would be That'd fun. That'd be so great. I just lost my place. Uh, uh, Blue asks, in honor of Valentine's Day, what are... Or have been some of your favorite couples in wrestling, shoot or kayfabe? Billy Kidman and uh, Tori Wilson. Weren't they mm. a thing? Or was it? Mm-hmm. It was Tori Wilson, right? Yeah, they were a thing. Wasn't St- Who was Stacey Kubler with? Uh, David Flair? Oh, yes. Because the disparity there is so lopsided. <laughs> it's so. She was with George Clooney. But before George Clooney, it was David Flair. That is weird, man. Talking about out kicking your coverage. Holy crap. Um, I'm going to say uh, Gargano and Candice, especially in the way. Oh, Wildly entertaining. That was great stuff right there. That was awesome. Uh. <sighs> Heart says, uh, I have but one question. Would either of you two consider yourself fans of death matches? Oh, yeah. If so, who are your current favorite death match wrestlers? I think uh, he's got to look at Steve's shirt there. Dude, I got an Akira shirt. This dude eats glass. Yeah, he eats glass. Yeah, man. Uh, um, I I can watch them on occasion. I don't think I could, like, I have the stomach for them live anymore, though. Yeah, it's definitely, I have to be sort of like in the mood for it. Um, it can't be like a regular thing. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a bag of hostess donuts, those little donuts. Yeah. It's like, I can't do a whole bag all the time, but like, I don't know, every once in a while, if you're in the just, mood. just give me a bag and maybe I'll finish them. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll want to do it, eat glass. And maybe I won't, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's how I am. I can't do them all the time. And mainly I'm always just like, Hey, look, I hope these guys bleed a lot, but I hope at the end of the day, they're safe enough safe. and they're healthy enough that they come out of this all right. Exactly. But uh but no, I'm 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 down with it. I'm cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh come Tuesday asked, Do you think being a triple H guy has ultimately hurt wrestlers' careers? I feel like guys like Finn, Ooh. Samoa Joe, Bob Root, etc. would have been more success successful had whatever's going on not happened, not to speculate, but it seems like specifically triple H guys are getting punished. You know, man, there's no way any of those guys. I I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, like you can't you can't look at the landscape and not say. I mean, I know certain guys like Seth is was a Triple H guy. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, a Triple H guy. Uh, but yeah, I feel like there is a certain like window of Triple H guys that came up, like Finn, that Vince just looks at and he's like, mm, I don't, I don't, I don't buy this anymore. And I shouldn't have bought it in the first place. And now Finn Balor's just going to be sitting in catering when they treated him like an, a megastar in 2016. 16, 2016, yeah. You know, at a certain point, Vince just completely got turned off by Triple H guys. Yep. And and that was it. I mean, a lot of them have been like, you know, ba- you know, the Sasha Bailey, they're fine and they've done great. Oh, and yeah. they will continue to do great. But there is a certain set of, of guys that, yeah, they just, mm yeah. Uh, the wild dude. Why do you think it's harder to book compelling babyface champions? 
I WWE is, is so hesitant, seemingly, uh, to book baby faces in general with really any degree of dimension. I think Drew McIntyre was the last baby face champion. Yeah, that they got right because he just wasn't a smiling baby face. He liked to fight. He brought the fight on. And I thought there was there was there was a lot of stuff there for for Big E to have that level of success too. They just never gave him anything. Yeah, they never gave him anything. Yeah, they don't. You know, I. It just because um, because like typically, especially in recent years, WWE baby faces are pretty one dimensional, and that's it. There's not much to them. Whereas heels get to have more fun because you get to ha- have more dimension to your character. Yeah, they've they've had one decent. I'm trying to think now. They've had that like one decent baby face run. That was Becky, and like they mm-hmm. didn't even want her to be a face in the first place. Nope. And then they did, and and she was wildly over because she was, you know, she was. They sort of booked her as close to like an Austin type baby face, where she would yeah. just talk shit and beat everybody up. Yeah, and the same thing with Drew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Drew was out yeah. there talking crap and beating people up, and both Becky and Drew, those characters seemed genuine. Yeah, like right, they're an yeah. extension of who they actually were. Yeah. You know, and I felt again the same thing with Big E. What he was doing felt like an extension of who he is, but they just gave him nothing from a creative standpoint to build upon that. I feel I don't I I saw so little of his personality during his run. That honestly, like he just would sit around and watch everybody else do cool stuff around him, and he would rarely get his stuff in. Like it was like they they lobotomized him. Oh, especially in matches, he was yeah. getting he was getting like most matches he had to fight. He had to come from behind. Mm-hmm. Well, she's your champion. That shouldn't be the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, no, they just they, they don't. I don't think it's. I don't even think it's. It's. I mean, I think it probably is more difficult to book them because um, it's easier just by virtue of it being easier to book uh, a heel champion. But uh, but yeah, WWE just they 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 rarely understand how to get that right, and or they just don't want to. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know either. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, oh, here we go. Maggie says, Athena said after her match Saturday, the place she was out of, quote, doesn't let them show their hearts. And I definitely think that's what they were doing with Big E too. Yeah. It's like it's like they told him, hey, you're champion now. You have to be a badass. And he was like, okay, well, dude, is there any more direction than that? Probably it's not. Like, no. Just just don't do what you were doing before. Because like, I didn't see, there was there was hardly anything there. Like it, most of most of his personality was on display in backstage interviews that never made it to the actual TV I know, show. I know. So we, yeah. we get glimpses of that personality in promos, but not like you know five minutes of promo. That's without a doubt him. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll end on this one. Uh, Nick mm-hmm. uh, says Pat McAfee is a breath of fresh air to a pretty stale product, but how do you think he handles Vince screaming into his ear? They must have a pretty good relationship if he lets Pat talk about people pooping their pants every week, right? Pat does this because he wants to, not because he needs to. He makes a ton of money on his own show, and if he, for whatever reason, got let go, all right. I am. He very, doesn't need it. And I think yeah. for that, that like I'm sure Vince is aware of this. Ye- that he probably doesn't have a lot of leverage on Pat Pat McAfee, and because of that, I don't think Pat. Is probably going to be as susceptible to be bullied by Vince as maybe some other people would be. So Vince is a billionaire. Yeah. Pat's a millionaire. Yeah. Many times over. I wonder if the uh, if if we had a recording of what's going on in. Um, What's the what's the dude on Raw's name? Jimmy Smith? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Jimmy Smith. See, he's great because he's invisible. <laughs> you know, I barely realize that dude is there. Yeah. And I, I, I like that. Pat, I realize he's there because he adds so much. Mm-hmm. That other dude they had on Raw before, he was he was visible in a really bad way. Yeah, he was he was taken away from the show. Who wow, wow, woo. That kind yeah. of shit. Yeah. I wonder if we had a recording of what goes on in Jimmy Smith's ear versus what goes on in Pat McAfee's ear, if there'd be a big difference or if one guy, uh, you know, if Pat McAfee's just like, yeah, I don't really care what you're saying. I'm going to do what I can 
when I hear you barking in my ear, I'll I'll do what I can to accommodate you. But I'm Pat McAfee. I don't need this. I'm here because I want to be here. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if there'd be a big difference if Vince McMahon understands what you just said. Or yeah, if he's know. like, I'm a billionaire. All these people are the same to me. Or he, he's like, oh, you're all announcers, and I will talk to you how I talk to announcers. You yeah, know? yeah. And then it's up to them to, to take it or not. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Maggie, here's, yeah, I wonder if Pat's audience slash platform, is, slash platform is an appeal and an influencing factor for Vince. I don't know. I would think you would think so, but then would Vince think so. is weird, you know? Yeah. Vince wants to do things his way. Yeah, that's always the thing. Um. And I, I would think that would supersede everything, but I don't know. Vince is also pretty savvy. He'd have to know Sometimes. that having Sometimes. Pat there is would be a benefit. Yeah, you'd think so. Yeah. You'd think so. Yeah. Then again, this is Vince McMahon. Unless Vince just really likes Pat, which that's, is a possibility. That's entirely as well. possible. It's entirely you know, possible. Maybe it's a simple thing. It's like, hey, I like you, pal. You know, it's it might be one of those things where Pat talks to him the way he talks to anybody else because he doesn't care. Yeah. And Vince might like that about him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, maybe Vince just says, all right, these are your kind of where, where you, these are your like boundaries, essentially. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, here, these, these, this is, this is the area where you got to kind of keep your comments uh, confined to and you're good. Mm-hmm. You know, within those confines, have at it, be yeah. creative. Because yeah. no one right now, I don't I think in our entire pro wrestling is good, is hyping up a segment and getting you excited for a segment while it's happening than Pat McAfee. I know. Like yeah. his his enthusiasm seems genuine and it's infectious. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like a real fan of what's going on. He does. And that's that's what by and large is sorely missing from WWE product, say for NXT UK, is that level of enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and, yeah. and and feeling genuine. Yeah. Which is what NXT UK is all about, because you feel like the, what you're watching isn't people performing characters. They just feel like people. I know, yeah, yeah, and they all seem like they're having a lot of fun with what they're yeah. doing. Whether yeah, just yeah. just just watch that Gallus bit went on a uh, Supernova sessions. Yeah, they were having a blast. Everybody in that segment was having an absolute blast, and you could tell. Gallus boys on talk. <laughs> Gallus boys on talk. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with our raw review. And until then, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.